Hi there. I'm Helen, a 35-year-old woman who thrives on organization and tidiness. Currently, I work as an auditor for a prominent firm, and my meticulous habits, especially when it comes to keeping receipts and punctually handling taxes, often become the butt of jokes among my friends. However, I firmly believe that it's these small routines that help keep my life orderly and fluid. My journey with my husband Scott began at a party thrown by our mutual friend Brenda. I can vividly recall that night. I was enjoying a glass of wine and reconnecting with some former college mates when Scott made his entrance. Slightly older than me, he moved with a self-assuredness and sported a captivating smile. He was a manager at a food sales company. Approaching me with a casual confidence, he asked, "Hey, I'm Scott. Do you mind if I join you?" Clutching a beer and offering a direct gaze, "Sure, I'm Helen. Nice to meet you." I responded, returning his smile. Our conversation kicked off seamlessly, uncovering our mutual enjoyment of hiking and our shared affection for classic rock. A few months into dating, Scott invited me to a barbecue at his sister Margaret's house, marking my first encounter with his family. I was understandably nervous, but upon our arrival, Margaret welcomed us warmly. Her four children, however, were a bundle of chaotic energy, scattering toys and sprinting around. Despite my discomfort with the unruliness, I introduced myself, "Nice to meet you all," as the kids escalated their antics throughout the evening. As Scott and I grew closer, our discussions about the future led to him proposing during a scenic hike with the valley sprawling below us. It was a simple yet heartfelt proposal, exactly to my taste. Our wedding was beautiful, albeit with a slight disruption by Margaret's kids once again, who seemed to revel in chaos. While Scott laughed it off, appreciating their joy, I struggled to keep my irritation under wraps, opting not to argue to maintain the joy of our day. After marriage, Scott and I decided it was time to buy our own home, transitioning from a rented apartment. During one of our evening discussions about finances and household contributions, Scott surprised me by offering to buy me a new car to replace my aging vehicle. Delighted and taken aback. I eagerly embraced the idea, thrilled about the new beginnings, and shared life ahead with Scott. Yeah, it's about time you had something dependable, Scott said with a warm smile, clearly excited about moving forward. We started our house hunt immediately, and after a few weeks, we stumbled upon a stunning house. Though on the pricey side, we both agreed it was the perfect fit for us. Moving in was chaotic, but I was thrilled about the prospect of decorating our new place. I devoted many hours to picking out high-quality, stylish furniture and appliances. On Saturday, Scott surprised me with a sleek, shiny new car. Overjoyed, I hugged him tightly. "Scott, this is incredible! Thank you so much!" I exclaimed. He simply smiled and replied, "You're welcome, Helen. You deserve it." As we settled into our new home, initially everything seemed perfect. We both enjoyed our jobs and loved returning to our cozy, lovingly decorated house. However, as time went on, small things began to irk me. Scott's relaxed attitude, which I once found endearing, now grated on me, especially concerning household tasks. "Scott, can you help with the dishes tonight?" I asked one evening after dinner. He looked at me with tired eyes and said, "Ah, I had a long day. Can't we just do them tomorrow?" I couldn't hide my frustration. Scott, we can't keep putting things off. I'm tired too, but we need to maintain a clean home. I insisted. Reluctantly, he agreed and got up from the couch. A few months into our marriage, I grew anxious because I was having trouble getting pregnant. It stressed me out significantly. My doctor advised patience, assuring me it would happen when the time was right. But it was still hard not to worry. Meanwhile. Scott's sister Margaret, who lived in the neighboring state, seemed to be visiting us endlessly. It felt as though she lived right next door. On each visit, she would unload all her marital troubles on me. Helen, you won't believe what Kevin did this time. She would begin rolling her eyes dramatically. One evening, I tried to change the subject. Margaret, can we talk about something else for a change? But she brushed off my hint. Oh come on, Helen! I need to vent. You're the only one who gets it," she would say, oblivious to my discomfort. 
and her kids were just as exhausting. They turned our home into a circus the minute they walked in, running around, fighting, throwing food, and being incredibly loud. After a long week, all I wanted was some peace, but that seemed impossible. Guys, can you please calm down? I would ask, struggling to maintain my composure. Why are you always so uptight, Helen? Margaret snapped at me when I tried to get her kids to behave. They're making a mess, Margaret. I just cleaned up, I would respond, my patience thinning. Then she hit me with a low blow. Well, maybe if you had your kids, you'd understand. Her words cut deep, especially knowing my struggles with fertility. It felt like a physical blow, and I couldn't believe Scott didn't stand up for me. Scott, are you going to let her talk to me like that? I asked, my voice trembling with anger and hurt. Helen, calm down. You're making a big deal out of nothing, he said, taking her side again. A big deal out of nothing? She just insulted me in my own home. I shouted, tears starting to form. I was so frustrated and done with being undermined and unappreciated in my own space, living with the constant disrespect in my own home where my husband always sided with his sister was wearing me down. It became evident that things needed to change, and they needed to change fast. One Saturday, Margaret arrived unannounced with her four kids in tow. Helen, I need a break from parenting. I'm going shopping, she declared, dropping her kids off without waiting for a response. The irony of her using the word parenting made me chuckle. Her visits always turned our home into a zoo. Fine, Margaret, but make it quick, I said, the stress already building up. Thanks, Helen. You're a lifesaver, she chirped, grabbing her purse and rushing out the door before I could protest. There I was in the kitchen trying to cook dinner. Cooking is a meticulous process for me, and I like things to be done perfectly. But with the kids causing chaos, focusing was nearly impossible. They were running around yelling and making a mess. Guys, can you keep it down? I shouted from the kitchen, hoping for a moment of peace. Of course, they paid no heed. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed through the house. My heart sank. I dashed into the living room and found my worst fear realized. My grandfather's antique Chinese vase lay shattered on the floor. My chest tightened with anger and frustration. What the hell happened here? I screamed, facing the kids who now stood still, wearing guilty expressions. We were just playing, one mumbled, avoiding my gaze. This vase was priceless. It belonged to my grandfather. Do you understand what you've done? I was livid, shaking with anger. Just then, Scott walked in, his demeanor calm and clueless. What's going on, Helen? He asked, noticing the tension. Your niece and nephews just broke my grandfather's vase. Look at this mess. I pointed to the shattered pieces on the floor. Calm down, Helen. It's just a vase. We can get it fixed, he said, dismissing my feelings as if it were nothing. Just a vase? Scott, this isn't about the vase. It's about respect. I'm tired of this. Every time Margaret visits, our house turns into a disaster zone, and you don't seem to care. I shouted, my voice cracking with frustration. Margaret chose that moment to walk in, bags in hand, looking annoyed. What's all this yelling about? Your kids broke my grandfather's vase, Margaret. Look at this mess. I pointed to the floor, trying to hold back my tears. Well, maybe you should have kept a better eye on them, she retorted without a hint of an apology. Are you kidding me? They're your kids, Margaret. I shouldn't have to watch them, I retorted, my hands trembling with anger. Scott shook his head, looking annoyed. You're overreacting, Helen. Just drop it. Overreacting? I've had enough of this. I'm tired of being treated like I don't matter in my own home. I screamed, the tears finally spilling over. Scott stood there, silent and cold, while Margaret smirked as if she had won some sort of victory. I couldn't take it anymore. I stormed out of the room, overwhelmed by a mix of anger, hurt, and betrayal. Margaret's chaotic visits had been a recurring issue for months, but I had no idea what was coming next. One morning, as Scott sat at the kitchen table munching on his toast, he casually dropped a bombshell. Helen, I need to tell you something. Margaret's getting divorced and she's moving in with us, with the kids, for a few months, he announced as if discussing the weather. I nearly dropped my coffee. Are you serious? Our house is already a madhouse. Handling their chaos for a day is one thing, but living with it for months, 
That's entirely different, I pointed out, feeling overwhelmed by the thought. Scott looked at me earnestly. She's my sister, Helen. She needs our help. You need to be more understanding. Understanding? Scott, I've been extremely patient, but this is just too much. Why can't we rent a place for her nearby? I'll even pay for the first month's rent, I suggested, trying to find a middle ground while keeping my composure. No, she'll be better off here. Plus, you can help with the kids and keep things clean, he responded, as if the arrangement couldn't be more obvious. I'm not a babysitter, Scott. I work full-time, too, and I need my downtime when I get home, I retorted, my frustration peaking. Stop being so selfish, Helen. It's family. They need us, he snapped, his tone growing sharp. I'm not being selfish. I'm looking for a reasonable compromise. I won't let my life be completely disrupted, I countered, my anger rising. Well, they're coming tomorrow evening, so you better get used to the idea, Scott said abruptly, standing up and leaving the kitchen. I was stunned. I felt blindsided and betrayed. The next morning, still upset from our argument, I dressed for work and went to grab my car keys, but they were missing. When I called Scott, his tone was too calm. I took the car. It's mine, remember? I'm giving it to Margaret so she can use it for the kids, he informed me nonchalantly. You're giving my car to Margaret? Are you serious right now? I managed to say, shocked. It's not your car, Helen. I paid for it, and she needs it more than you do, he said matter-of-factly. That was the last straw. You've taken everything from me, and I'm done, I said, my voice trembling with resolve. What are you talking about? Don't be dramatic, Helen, he replied, missing the gravity of the situation. I hung up, feeling like I was trapped in a nightmare. How had things deteriorated so badly? I called a moving company immediately. Hi, I need a team to move some furniture and appliances today. It's urgent. The movers arrived a few hours later. I directed them around the house, pointing out what to take. The beds, sofas, chandeliers, and even the faucets in the bathroom. Watching them remove each item, I felt a peculiar sense of relief. Everything goes to my mom's house. Thanks for the quick work, guys, I told them, handing over a tip. With the house now empty, I gathered my essentials and drove to my mom's place. Later that day, my phone buzzed relentlessly with calls from Scott, which I ignored, feeling a mix of anxiety and empowerment. That evening, a loud knock rattled the door. I opened it to find Scott furious. What the hell, Helen? What did you do? He shouted as he stormed into the living room. I took my stuff, Scott. You took the car, so I took what I bought, I replied calmly. This is insane. You stripped the house bare. Where are Margaret and the kids supposed to sleep? He yelled, his face flushed with anger. That's your problem, Scott. You made this mess. Now you deal with it, I said, folding my arms. You're a thief, Helen. You stole everything, he accused, waving his arms frantically. I didn't steal anything. Here are the receipts, I responded, pulling out a folder and showing him proof of purchase for all the furniture and appliances. He flipped through the receipts, his anger turning to frustration. Fine, Helen. If this is how you want to play it, I'll file for divorce, Scott said bitterly. I took a deep breath and handed him a stack of papers. Already done. Here are the divorce papers. And we're done, he stated his face turning pale as he stared at the divorce papers. You're serious about this, aren't you? Dead serious, Scott? I deserve better than this, I replied, a strange sense of calm settling over me. Without another word, he took a pen from his pocket, signed the papers, and handed them back to me. Fine, Helen, have it your way. I watched him walk out of my mom's house, the door slamming shut behind him, I stood there for a moment, feeling a mix of relief and sadness. It was over, and deep down, I knew it was the right decision. That night, I sat down with my mom and recounted everything that had happened. She listened, her presence comforting, and when I finished, she nodded in agreement that I had made the right choice. Helen, you've been through so much. It's time you focused on yourself and your happiness, she said, hugging me. Thanks, Mom. I just need some time to figure things out, I replied, feeling as though a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. In the days that followed, I began to settle into a new routine. 
I started organizing my space at my mom's house and thinking about my next steps. It was a fresh start, and for the first time in a long time, I felt hopeful about the future. I knew the road ahead wouldn't be easy, but I was ready to face it head on. I had reclaimed my life and there was no turning back. After the divorce, Scott and I sold our house and split the proceeds. I decided it was time to find a place of my own. While my mom's house was a great temporary sanctuary, I needed my own space. One afternoon, while sitting in the kitchen with my mom, I scrolled through apartment listings on my laptop. Mom, I think I found a place that looks perfect. It's a small apartment downtown, close to work, I said, showing her the pictures. She leaned over my shoulder and smiled. That looks nice, Helen. Have you called the realtor yet? Not yet, but I'm going to do that right now, I said, a bit excited. I dialed the number and waited for the realtor to pick up. After a few rings, a friendly voice answered. Hello, this is Raymond. How can I help you? Hi, Raymond. My name is Helen. I'm interested in the apartment you have listed downtown. Is it still available? I asked, crossing my fingers. Yes, it's still available. Would you like to schedule a viewing? He replied, sounding hopeful. Absolutely. How about tomorrow afternoon? I suggested, trying to maintain my composure. That works for me. I'll see you at 4 p.m., Raymond confirmed before we ended the call. The next day, I met Raymond downtown to view the apartment. He greeted me with a warm smile outside the building. Hi, Helen. Nice to meet you. Let me show you around, he said, shaking my hand. The apartment was small but cozy, just what I needed. It featured a nice kitchen, a spacious living room, and a small balcony with a decent view of the city. This place is perfect, Raymond. I'll take it, I declared, a sense of relief washing over me. After signing the lease agreement and receiving the keys, I started planning my move. I wanted to make this new space truly my own, a fresh start. I spent the next few days packing up at my mom's house and arranged for movers to handle the larger items. On a moving day, my mom watched as the movers loaded up the truck. She hugged me tightly, her eyes moist but her smile proud. You're doing the right thing, Helen. I'm proud of you, she said. Thanks, Mom. Here's to new beginnings, I replied, feeling ready to embrace whatever came next with open arms and an open heart. As the last box was hoisted into the moving truck, I felt a swirl of excitement and nerves about stepping into this new chapter of my life. Helen, this is going to be great for you. A fresh start is just what you need, my mom said, wrapping me in a comforting hug. Thanks, Mom. I'm looking forward to it, I replied, smiling broadly. We drove to my new downtown apartment, and with the help of my mom and a couple of close friends, we quickly got everything unloaded and set up. As I surveyed my new surroundings, a sense of accomplishment washed over me. It was the beginning of a new chapter, and I was ready to embrace it. That evening, to celebrate the move, I invited my mom and friends to stay for dinner. We ordered pizza and gathered on the floor amidst boxes, raising our glasses of soda in a makeshift toast. Cheers to Helen and her new place, my friend Brenda exclaimed. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate all your help and support, I said, feeling a deep sense of gratitude. As the night progressed, we shared laughs and stories, and for the first time in a long time, I felt genuinely happy and free. Later, as I sat on my balcony overlooking the city lights, I reflected on everything I had been through and how much I had grown. I was proud of myself for taking control of my life and making the necessary changes. From mutual friends, I learned that Scott had used his share of the money to buy a small apartment where he now lived with Margaret and her four kids. He was working three jobs to manage the bills while Margaret remained unemployed, and they were constantly arguing. Then, unexpectedly, Scott called me one day. Seeing his name flash on my phone screen was a surprise, but curiosity got the better of me, and I answered. Hello, Scott. What's up? I responded, maintaining a neutral tone. Helen, please just hear me out, he began, his voice tinged with desperation. I know I messed up. I'm so sorry for everything. I didn't realize how hard it was for you with Margaret's kids. I couldn't help but chuckle slightly. 
Really, Scott? You're realizing this now, after all this time? Yeah, I know it's late, but I'm serious. I've been thinking a lot, and I miss you. I miss us. Can we start over? I'm ready to move into your apartment and make things right, he said, his voice almost pleading. I shook my head in disbelief, a chuckle escaping my lips. Scott, you've got to be kidding me. You think you can just waltz back into my life like nothing happened? Helen, I'm serious. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll even take on more work to make it up to you, he insisted, sounding more desperate. I took a moment to gather my thoughts before responding. Scott, it's too late for that. I've moved on. I'm building a life I love, and there's no room in it for the kind of drama you bring. I wish you the best with your situation, but I'm not interested in going back. Goodbye, Scott. With that, I ended the call, a sense of finality settling in. As I turned back to the city lights, I felt a renewed sense of freedom. I was ready to move forward on my terms without looking back. I've moved on, I'm happy now, and I'm not looking to go back to that mess, I replied firmly to Scott. Come on, Helen, we can make it work this time. I've changed, he insisted, a mix of desperation and hope in his voice. Feeling a mix of pity and irritation, I responded, Scott, it's over. You need to focus on your own life and your family. I'm not interested in going back to that chaos. Helen, please, I'm begging you, he pleaded, his voice cracking with emotion. Scott, no. I found peace without you, and I'm not giving that up, I said, standing my ground. Take care, Scott. I hope you find your way. I hung up the phone, feeling a strange mix of relief and closure. It was clear Scott was struggling but I couldn't let his problems pull me back into a situation I had worked so hard to escape. Later that day, I met up with Brenda for coffee and shared the bizarre encounter. You won't believe who called me today, I began, rolling my eyes playfully. Who? Brenda asked, her eyebrow raised in curiosity. Scott. He begged me to take him back and let him move into my apartment, I recounted, shaking my head in disbelief. Brenda laughed, almost spitting out her coffee. Are you serious? What did you say? I told him, no, of course I'm not going back to that mess, I replied, a smile spreading across my face. We spent the rest of the afternoon chatting and laughing, and I realized just how far I had come. I had built a new life for myself, one that was peaceful and fulfilling. I wasn't going to let anyone take that away from me. As I walked home later, I felt a deep sense of satisfaction and peace wash over me. I had finally closed the chapter on that turbulent part of my life and was ready to move forward with confidence and joy. The city around me seemed to echo my newfound freedom, and with each step, I felt more and more assured of the bright future ahead.